You know guys, I'm sure you know this, but I'm far from perfect. And what I mean by that is that obviously, I make mistakes all the time, you know? I try my best, but it happens. And uh, I did make a mistake last week. When it came to those Sanzidia, the Madagascan tree boas, well yeah, I, uh, I kinda gave you guys some bad information. So uh, let me grab one of those and tell you what I did. So it's not that I screwed up about getting the actual animals because they're doing great. They're eating, they're absolutely amazing. What it is I screwed up on the locality. I actually told you guys a bunch of terribly bad information to be honest with you. First off, I said that they only came from the east side of Madagascar, which is not true. These are actually from, whoa! These are actually from the west side of Madagascar. And that little monkey almost got me in the face. Okay, these guys are usually really tame. Obviously a little bit upset right now. And the truth is these are what they call the Mandarin phase. So I also told you that they go through an octogenic color change and turn green when they get older. Well, the truth is, is that the Mandarins from the west side of Madagascar actually stay kind of this color and they don't go through that change to green, which actually makes me super happy because these are actually super uncommon and I was super happy to hear about that. Golden Coast Exotics actually reached out to me and just said, hey, I just want to let you know these guys are not Easterns. And I was like, that is great news. I'm so glad to hear that. So basically, I want to show you a picture of these as an adult, which is right here. And then of course, the Easterns that do turn green actually are like this color right here. So you can definitely see that there's a big difference in the way they look as adults. And I am over the moon happy that I was wrong about it, to be honest with you. Now I had researched care of these guys for the last 20 years, so that wasn't an issue. But when it came to the locality, I was definitely wrong. And I kind of feel bad because I never want to give you guys bad information. But this time, I just miss, you know, misspoke. And that's just the way it is. And I wanted to make a wrong a right and let you guys know that we have the mandarins or western phase of the Madagascan tree boas or the Sanzinius Madagascarinensis. I am over the moon happy about this. And you know, it's part of having animals and doing things. You aren't always right. Take for instance, I can't think of a larger mistake than Ariana, my female female green anaconda that of course I thought was a male green anaconda until this happened. Aries happens to be eating something kind of interesting. Now, of course you remember that I didn't understand why Aries and Ivy didn't breed this year because they both look like they're about the same thing. Well, guess what we found? We found Aries actually having infertile ova. So I didn't expect even infertile ova, but to have a live baby, a virgin live baby was absolutely incredible. Wow, we have a baby green anaconda being born right in front of us. Jay, what do you have? A little baby anaconda. And that was just a dumb mistake by someone that's been doing it for a long time. The one thing I always give everyone advice, I give you guys this advice, I should take my own advice, is anytime you get an animal, even if you get one from BHB, you should have it sex to make sure that we didn't make a mistake. It happens. I mean, with us selling as many animals as we have, we're going to undoubtedly make a mistake and there's going to be a wrong sexing. So every animal I bring in, I always sex to make sure it's right. But with Ariana, I just, it all made sense, right? It was a small animal. I mean, she's not much different as far as her age than Ivy. But look at the size. And again, males stay much smaller. So it all just kind of made sense for me, right? And so for almost a year, I was like, Aries is a boy. Well, Aries is not a boy. Aries is now Ariana and is a girl. And we found out that's a huge mistake. And that was really all on me because I made the mistake of not sexing it as soon as I got the animal. Obviously, there's a difference between making a mistake or what I did with the Sanzini and knowledge that we've gained. But I have been doing reptiles for long enough to really see knowledge change a tremendous amount. And I really think of Boland's pythons when I think of how far the hobby has come, right? Because basically, early on, when I was a kid, there was like no information on Boland's pythons. There was a handful of pictures and no one even owned them, right? And I remember actually Tracy Barker, who at the time was Tracy Miller, before she got married to Dave Barker, who is from VPI, which are legends in the reptile hobby. Tracy actually got a gravid female Boland's python out of New Guinea. Now she didn't know it was gravid when she got it, but she wanted to work with Boland's pythons and she was able to have a clutch of eggs and ended up hatching, I think like eight or 10 babies out of them. And that was the first time there was ever any captive babies. This goes back into the early nineties and it was all of the rage. And back then we didn't know anything about Boland's pythons. I mean, they were such elusive animals. And even all these years later, we haven't really learned as much as we do about most other animals. Of course, Ori, Flygel and 
all the Boland's Round Table people have done such a great job of kind of dissecting what this animal is all about. And it truly is one of the most mysterious pythons on the planet and one of the most incredible pythons on the planet as well. I mean, I can't believe that we actually have an opportunity to work with a Boland's Python here at the Reptarium because again, when you go back all those years ago, we didn't even know anything about him and even just keeping him alive was almost impossible, let alone thriving in captivity like they are now. And I think to myself, if we've learned this much in the last 35 years, what are we gonna learn over the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years? It's such an exciting thing to see these animals come from being an animal that is unobtainable to being able to be holding it and talking to you guys about it right now. The truth is, is that we probably don't have enough time that YouTube would allow us to use to tell you how many mistakes I've made in my life. And I'm not too big to admit it. As a matter of fact, I think it's important to admit your mistakes better your mistakes and I think that I've continued to try to do that with everything that I've done you know I've made tons of bad decisions in the past some on YouTube some off YouTube and I just continue to try to better myself the best I can to be the best version I can and you guys hold me accountable and you guys do make me a better version of myself so it's partly your credit that I obviously continue to try to better myself but listen I've got a long long way to go I hope that five years from now I'll look back and hope that I've made a tremendous transition from where I was today at least that's the hope obviously we started out with Sanzinia. We showed you guys Boland's Pythons. Night Fury is absolutely ridiculous. And I wonder all the time what you guys think is one of the most amazing snakes. I mean, what do you think from a color standpoint, whether it's natural or a mutation, what is that animal that you're like, Brian, that is the coolest snake that I've ever seen. I mean, obviously Carl, the Emerald Tree Boa, certainly is right up there with one of the most spectacular snakes, but there's so many, and, and we have so many, I mean, colubrids and pythons and boas and perdita. I mean, you could go down the list and say, that's incredible. But I am curious, down in the comments, do me a favor. Can you tell me what snake you think is the most beautiful snake you've ever seen? It can even be venomous, a gaboon viper, a rhino viper. I mean, I don't care, bush viper, whatever you guys want. I want to know from you guys, and I'll basically tally it up and maybe do a community tab, and we'll do a vote on like the top three and find out what you guys, my community, thinks is the most beautiful snake out there. You know, again, snakes like Night Fury may not have a lot of color, but boy, I tell you what, that iridescence is ridiculous. So uh, go ahead down in the comments. Go ahead, post that. And while you're down there, do me a favor, hit that like button. You guys haven't been crushing the like button as much as usual, so uh, go ahead and do that for me, okay? Comment, like, and I appreciate you. Halloween's over, guys, so all of the creepy, crawly little things have to be taken down. Skeletons have to come down. Lights have to come down. I love Halloween. It was a great time. Thank you for everyone that came to visit us during the Halloween season. But uh, hey, the spooky season's over. Now we're on to Thanksgiving. We're in charge of taking down the decorations. Let's go. I will miss you, but it's time to put it away. So guys did a good job of tearing the place down and making it look a little bit less uh, spooky around here. But uh, so it's one of my favorite holidays. Let me know which holiday is your favorite. I mean, I think 4th of July because I love summer and Halloween are my two favorites. So uh, I'm definitely gonna miss it, but uh, I'll still be watching plenty of spooky movies. I wanted to give you a little update on my little albino box turtle who everyone is falling in love with, not just on Instagram and TikTok, but also everyone that comes into the Reptarium because he's so cute. You could literally come up and put your finger by the glass and he'll come right up to the glass because he's just thinking he's gonna get fed. Well, you guys came up with a ton of amazing names, but we ended up deciding on Tyson because he's a little tank, right? He's like Mike Tyson, little guy with a lot of heart, a lot of power, and uh, we just thought that Tyson was the perfect name for this little guy. He is such an incredible little dude. And what we're gonna do is start weighing him. He's eating every single day or every other day at least, really crushing food. But of course, we don't know what the growth is. And when you're working with an animal like Tyson every single day, it's hard to even know when they're growing, to be honest with you, because we see him every single day, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh this guy, start doing weekly weights. Hopefully we'll see an increase in size in 
weight, obviously. And that will, we will get a good idea if this guy is doing well. So far, doing incredible. I was so nervous when I first got this guy, but with how good he's doing, definitely falling in love with him, and everyone else is falling in love with him too. So I just wanted to introduce you to the albino box turtle, Tyson. May I tell you what, there are times where I'm just coming through just looking at animals and I just like open a drawer and go, what? <laughs> and that was today. I thought this is actually an albino blood redder, what they call an albino diffuse scaleless corn snake. And wow, not only is it completely scaleless, where there's no remnant scales up on top, meaning the pattern is even softer, but look at the color on that animal on Frickin' believable. This is actually a girl that should be ready to breed here this next year, about going into brumation, but wow, I tell you what, I have been into corn snakes since I was 16 years old. As a matter of fact, it was my first actual breeding of any snake that I bred the entire way was actually a corn snake, and uh, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that one day I'd be looking at a snake like this. I mean, holy cow, that, you need sunglasses to look at that snake. What the heck are you doing, man? Sitting. Why are you sitting around? Why don't you do it? Why aren't you working? I am. You're working? How are you working? Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do any feeding sled? Yeah, of course. Have you got him trained to do any tricks yet? Uh, not really. We got him to go to the tube, but like not to chase food. Yeah, I see. He just that. kept that cruising. Was that was yeah. weak. Yeah. yeah. But do better, okay? I'm working on it. <laughs> of course, our Fly River turtles are down here. I said it's just for a temporary thing until we get the expansion. Gonna go into a gigantic enclosure. But the thing we really have been working on is giving the opportunity for people to come and actually hand feed them. And I think we finally might have gotten there. Look at, look at this old monkey. Come on, buddy. I know you want it. There he is. Look at that. That is so freaking cool, man. These guys used to be terrified of us. They didn't even want to come near us. Now they're actually taking it. And that's what makes these things so incredible. Look at them just chowing on that apple. It's so cool. So again, when we get this expansion, we wanted to get to a point where he would actually come up and take it like that. And then of course, uh, we can allow people to do that, which is just absolutely incredible. I am so jazzed that we finally got there. Just noticed that Bruce actually had baby Kush out doing a little training with him. How's he coming? Oh, we're, we're learning some lessons here. Oh my gosh, you're bleeding got, a little bit. So I got the headphones in, but yeah, like, uh, so oh. I had to try and catch him before he hopped right on my face, so yeah. Oh, so this right. was when he hopped on? Yeah, he tried to hop on my face. Oh my yeah. gosh, well, you, you're uh, he was he, he he didn't realize what he was doing. He was just trying to get up top of my head. Yeah, well, he's, uh, is, will you do chim rubs? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hi. He's a, he still gets sort of, I know, but he still gets oh sort of like, like a little nervous with the touching itself, but he doesn't really care. He's doing good. Yeah, he's oh my a baby gosh. Boy, dude, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh, you. you're going to need a band aid. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh, Bruce is, he's hardcore, but baby Kush, can you believe that you can just come up to him and just pat him like this now? He's just great, like, great he's work, just all Bruce. thinking, bro. He's You've done so man. good, man. You did, well, that's, that's impressive <laughs> right there. What do you think she thinks about when she's looking out the window? I have no idea. Maybe she sees them. Then pokes by and rolls and by. Like, you know, there goes my brother. I don't know. So what do you think Matilda's thinking about when she's looking out the window? Actually, I think she's thinking kind of like Annie. You're like, the sun will come out tomorrow. Fetch your bottle, dollar left tomorrow. With that being said, hope you enjoyed today's video. I know I certainly enjoyed it. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. I appreciate you guys. And by the way, if you want to watch more videos, Here's a playlist. You can watch as many as you want. Uh, spend the rest of your life if you spend the rest of the day that way. It would make me happy. You know what else would make you happy? Over here, hit that subscription button. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. <laughs> Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.